Okay, so at this point, what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about the Jigsaw Classroom. I think many of you are familiar with this concept, um, but I think it's a really powerful learning strategy, and you can really use it for so many different parts of the class. So I'm just going to illustrate it for one. We're going to actually try it out today. Um, it'll be a very abbreviated, very short um, version of it. In class, obviously, you'll have to give them more time. Um, oftentimes, you need a minimum of 30 to 45 minutes to do this, but it all depends on the nature of um, how much material you're asking them to look at or talk about. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the Jigsaw Classroom, there's really three steps that happen. The first step is, is you have a home base group. Well, I just declared your tables as your home base group. So this, this is your home base group, your home base group, and your home base group. And what happens here is that you get to spend about a minute or so with your home base group, and then you'll be leaving them outside your comfort zone, moving on, interacting with other students and other parts of the room. And all you need to do in your home base group is to decide which one of you is going to do which task. So you're all going to become an expert in one task. And I use the word expert with quotations. You know, we're not really becoming gigantic experts, but more expert than the other tech table me members. So um, then what will happen is, is you'll go into your expert group, and I'll tell you about those expert groups in a moment. And in the expert group is where most of the work happens. So when you're in your expert group, you are working together with the textbook in some way or other class materials to learn some kind of content that you are then bringing back to your home base group. And then the final stage is when you go back to your home base group, and then each person will teach what they learned to their home base group members. So what happens is, is this is a very active way for students to be engaged with others and with course content. And there really is like no room for slackers. And you know, everyone's got a role. There's a lot of accountability. And there's a lot of learning that can take place. Now, as the professor of the class, this is a lot of work for you. The work comes in during the expert group. Because when, let's just pretend you were the expert group now. If you were in the expert group, I have to make sure that your content is on target and good so that when you go back to your home base group members, they're getting good content. So you have to work every expert group and make sure. Now here's a mistake that a lot of faculty make. They'll go up to the group and they'll be like, hey, how's it going? What kind of answer are you going to get to that? Great. Great. All right, moving on. They're just like, keep going. Right? How do you have any idea that they know it's great? They're not good at self-assessment, right? We didn't get to that yet. So forget that question. Don't ask them how's it going. It doesn't matter what their answer to that is. It's irrelevant and not meaningful. Instead, what do you got for me? What did you come up with? You know, like you want to do checking on content. What are you bringing back to your home base group? Tell me. You know, so you need to check and you need to call on people randomly because they all need to have it because they all have to go back to their home base group. So that's what you want to do is you want to do concept checks when you check in with your groups. Forget the how's it going question. That is not the right question. The right question is, is what do you have? And then you guide them if they're not in the right direction. All right? So you might have to open up the book and say, look at this section right here. I'll be back. <laughs> and, <they're> like, <clears throat> um, and that's great and on target, but you need more. Keep going. Right? So you want to give them specific feedback. And before you release them back to their home base group, you want to make sure every expert group has got it. And I mean every member in every expert group has got it written down. So you could be spot checking it, right? Like walking around and making sure they all have the right content written down. All right, so questions about the general process? We're going to try it now. So I'm actually going to ask you all to identify one of these areas. You're going to be answering the question that's attached to it. So you're going to pick, this is chapter seven content. So each of you at the table has got to pick, one of you has got to pick academic, one's got to pick financial, one's got to pick career. If you have a group that's not three, you don't need to panic. That means two of you have to share one and work together. That's all. Okay, so all of you decide which group you're going, which expert group you're going to be a part of. So take a minute to talk at your table. And then we will be leaving your tables and moving to the expert group in just a moment. <laughs> Everybody knows. Okay, so what's going to happen now is I'm going to move you, and you're going to take your book with you because you need it, and you'll go and work with your expert group. So I'll have the academic group work over here. I'll have the career group work here and the financial group work here. So go to your expert group, look in the text, look for the answer.
and then you'll be going back to your home base group and just, you're only going to get about three to five minutes for this because we're on the schedule. <laughs> Is that fine? Okay, folks, I'm going to have you go back to your home base group and don't do anything yet. Just get situated and I'll give you your next set of instructions in a moment. So just everyone go back to your home base group and then I'll tell you what's going to happen. Alright, so at this point, what I want you to do is each person will take, I'm only going to give you a minute, now in class, again, you can give more time depending on the length of it, but one minute for you to teach. What I would tell my students is, is that the learner should be taking notes and learning the content. So just go ahead and take one minute. If you were the academic person, share your expertise with your group, please. <laughs> All right, now we'll do the next group. So if you were the career person, you can go ahead and share your expertise with your group. So please share that expertise. Okay. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and have our financial group go ahead and share their expertise. Okay. All right, folks, for the sake of time, I'm going to bring us back together again so you can come back together. So you can see how this Jigsaw Classroom is a very active learning approach and you could use it for a variety of, you know, in a variety of ways for this class. You can really pick out any kind of chapter content that you're doing. Um, you know, Charlotte and I were just talking about how we both use it also on the first day of class for the syllabus. So I find that that works really well for a couple of reasons. It takes care of the icebreaker and climate kind of, you know, creating that culture in your class. It makes sure that they're actively engaged with the syllabus and it also teaches them how to do jigsaw so the next time you're ready to do it, you don't have to teach them how. They already know. The pattern has been established. So what I do with the jigsaw for the syllabus is I'll give them different sections of the syllabus. You'll be the expert on policy. You'll be the expert on assignments. You'll be the expert on, you know, whatever other piece you want, you know, details of the assignments or maybe you're an expert on one kind of assignment, whatever you want to do or resources that are available to you um, and you can break them up. I usually do about five different groups because it's a bigger syllabus, <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's a lot in there, so I usually kind of do five groups on that first day. Um, and as Donna was saying, she also uses it for the research articles, so you're, you're, you know, you could break up and have somebody be an expert on the intro, the method, the results, the discussion, and then come back and the whole team will then learn all of the content together. So there's lots of different ways to use the Jigsaw. It's a very powerful tool, and I encourage you to think about different ways to use it um, in our class and for our students. Any other comments or questions or reactions to the Jigsaw? Learning is what I found sort of the amount of time. You really need, as an instructor, the age and time that you have to share with them and then to launch you. Right. Otherwise, it's less. Absolutely. And, and you need to make sure that the amount that you're asking them to do is even because you don't want one group to be finished and the other group having 10 minutes more of work to do. So it takes a lot of strategy on your end. I actually will often use my phone and time them for a minute or two minutes or whatever, and that way I'm making sure I'm consistent from, with group to group. Um, so that's another strategy you can use. Great point. Thank you so much.